Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I just want to say welcome to all my new subscribers. Thank you guys for supporting me and willing to watch my journey and just, you know, be able to see like all my content and what I have to offer. Here you guys, so welcome to my channel. So as you guys can see, I've been getting like a lot of like hate, but also, you know, positivity. So yeah, I figure since there's a lot of new people, you know, from like my platforms who, you know, has all eyes on me, I just, you know, want to make a video basically answering you guys' questions. Because I know if I just meet somebody, you know, I could probably be curious of like why they keep saying this, making these videos, da, da, da. So instead of like, you know, judging me, I just want to say, hey, if you got any questions, you know, feel free to comment and I'll make a video to share. So this is what this video is going to be about answering you guys' questions. And um, I basically had posted for, you know, basically if you have any questions, let me know. So I had screenshotted some uh because a lot of them are like kind of similar anyway so i'm gonna do the best i can to answer these questions so if you are interested in watching this video make sure you guys like comment and hit the push notifications and don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel let's get it okay guys so i'm just gonna get straight to the point because i don't know how long this video is going to be okay so the first question is it takes a lot to get kicked out of a shelter with kids what did you do so basically it's not the fact that I did, me personally, I feel like I did anything wrong, you know? Like, in the shelter, you know, people use, like, it as, like, a power trip. Like, they feel like because, you know, they work there, they have, you know, the control to do certain things. Um, some may treat you different than somebody else type of thing that um, played a major, you know, that could play definitely a major role. Because I was, you know, a good, like, person there. Like, I tried, I was a mother simply trying my best to do what I got to do to get up out of there like I didn't have no intentions to like break rules anything it's just you could be trying so hard and it could be easy to forget something like for example a mandatory meeting um it could just you know just like stuff that can become overwhelming you know like a certain amount of infractions I think like either I think eight infractions and then like they kick you out so, in the very beginning, I never really got, like, any infractions. It just started happening, like, you know, towards the end of this whole shelter journey. And uh, basically, you know, it could have um, been, like, write-ups, like, maybe I wasn't with my son. Like, for example, we'll be outside and the smokers will be on this side and the playground will be up there. But they want you with your kids at all times. It could be, like, something like, like that. Oh, I got an infraction from, I guess, having cafeteria food in my room, which was for my baby it was on my stroller so i got caught i guess having that on the stroller in the room and uh and another thing is like there's clas who are like more strict than others so that was definitely an infraction that i had got one has definitely been about like my kid it's like they could be like an eye like i could see my kid but like they want you like literally like with your kids but that didn't like happen a lot to where I got written up for. I probably have to come back to it because I honestly really don't know. But it was like just things like that, you know. Um, and then they also give like engagement strikes. Like if you miss like a mandatory meeting or something. Little things like that. It's really not really much to it. It's just they're just real strict on like rules. So if you was to get caught or whatever, they just write, basically write you up for it. But I was, you know they're literally focused to like get up out of there and even though i was staying there i really honestly didn't get the help that you would think a shelter would give you someone said aren't you ashamed of getting on here every day telling us your problem and no one is helping you i was homeless for 43 days back in the 90s and moved 30 minutes away from home and had a place quick no i'm not ashamed because social media is my outlet like i have um, different like social medias like you know Instagram Twitter TikTok Facebook uh, YouTube so it's like if I don't really have people in my life or if I don't really have like friends real friends I come to social media like I feel like this is my way to get help if I don't have someone in my life to help me so that's just something I've I guess been you know comfortable with you know um and i really i just don't feel ashamed like 
social media is my outlet. That's just as simple as it can get. It depends on basically like your goals in life, like where you want to, where can you see yourself living? And Atlanta was one of the places that I obviously wanted to move to. Like, I don't, you know, like, I didn't move somewhere. Like, honestly, when I moved to Atlanta, I never thought about the rent prices, none of that. I never thought about, oh, how expensive it could be. I never thought about none of that. I simply came to Atlanta for like a new start of life and everything. Like, I never not once thought about the rent, to be honest. So, I guess like for some people, when they move, um, rent may be a barrier for them. But I honestly didn't even think about the rent. Um, would I want to move somewhere like cheaper, like like move anywhere just to like pay cheap? Um, I never really, I, I would say no, because I'm not going to move anywhere that I'm not like happy to move to, if that makes sense. Um, I want to move to where somewhere that I may find obviously interesting. Someone said, where is your family? So I don't have no family in Atlanta. Well, if I have to be real with you guys, uh... My dad, he has a cousin, I want to say here, who's an older man, has his own family here. And I did meet them at a point, like, early on, but I don't talk to them at all. Um, I was at their place one time, um, and I hung out with their daughter at some point, or his wife's daughter. Um, she did me dirty, you guys. I don't, you know, deal with her, and I just stopped dealing with them all together, like... I don't even know them all like that anyway. That was just someone my dad said, part of his family that lived down here in Georgia. And, uh, yeah, and my sister, my oldest sister, she has a a relative. I don't know if he's her cousin. Dang, I, I forgot. But I never met him, but um, that's her family member. But my oldest sister, um, she's the only one out of me and my siblings that have a different dad. So that's pretty much has something to do with my sister's side of the family anyways. But other than that, I don't have no family in Georgia. Someone did say ungrateful and homeless. Baby girl, do that make sense? I have not, to me, showed any signs of ungratefulness. Um, I honestly feel like when I went to that homeless shelter that it was a blessing for me and my kids. Even though I was so down in the very, very beginning. But it also allowed me and my kids to be off the street. But it was also, I feel like, was getting in the way of a lot of things. But once I looked at it from a different perspective, it kind of changed my thinking process. And I tried to really get the best I could out of the program. Because they did not allow us to work. They didn't allow us to work. Like, I just, I went to the one shelter in february and then i got transferred to their other shelter that they go are a part of and i just got a job in october from graduating the job program so the thing i did like out of the program was um obviously you know, had like coping skills and everything like when it comes to like things in life um and the job program was definitely i feel like a good experience for me so yeah but ungrateful how am i ungrateful because i'm telling the truth about how what it was like in the homeless shelter like you could just because i'm in the homeless shelter doesn't mean everything will go peachy like people there you know could be nasty not caring not really there to help you so i don't see how i'm being ungrateful even and someone also made a comment like oh this ain't the hilton i never trust me baby it's definitely not the hilton definitely not the hilton and I wasn't expecting it to be like the Hilton. But you are there to basically get help, right? You're not just there just to just be there. You're there to obviously get help. And that's not what I basically got for me and my kids. I mean, look at us. Someone said, where the kid's father? So it's a couple questions. So the first question is, where the kid's father? So my oldest son, his dad is back home in PA and my other son my youngest his dad is here in georgia why do you need ten thousand dollars so honestly um i put ten thousand because i feel like that can help me at least be on the right track of having um financial stability so of course i obviously appreciate any help that i can get whether I don't exactly meet the 10,000 goal or at least close to it, I just feel like that can help me for one, help me get my foot in the door. 
that can help me, you know, partly, um, it could probably help me cover some party bills or um, it can help me get maybe things like food and everything for us transportation you know i was just in a car accident um but just help with like us getting um you know getting around and i came up with the gofundme because we got kicked out of the shelter it wasn't like oh um because i did create a gofundme a while ago in the very beginning um but i think that i don't know if that was before i don't know if that was before i got switched to the other one i'm not too sure i have to look back but i got it because we got kicked out and i want to see you know what support me and my kids could get because I don't really have, you know, that much help down here. So, yeah, and instead of me, you know, well, I'll just talk about that at a different time. But yeah, so basically, like, okay, so someone said you don't ever have family. So the people I really, really consider my family is my intermediate family, like my mom, my sisters, my brother. Um, I do talk to my mom and my sisters. I haven't been able to talk to my brother because he is in jail at the moment. Um, I wish him the best. I hope he can be out as soon as possible. Um, so yeah, but like I have talked to like sometimes my sisters and my mom, um, you know, so the ones who have helped me is the ones who obviously you know, help them when they could or can, but not all, I, I don't get help from like all of them though. Um, and my mom, she has like helped me a few times, uh, but they don't live here in Georgia. They live back home, you know? So, so only but so much they can do. And uh, yeah, and a lot of you may not know, but this is not the first time I've been hom like homeless. Like it's not the first time I've been homeless. Someone said TikTok, the first thing you run to when you need help. When I need help, I obviously try to like look up things myself or, you know, things of that nature. But if I feel like the need to want to post something like for help, like whatever that may be, I will post on all my platforms, not just one platform. Okay, um, someone said, why I be trying to be content creators with kids? Kids need stability. Uh, I was definitely about to see where y'all was till I watched this. What does being a content creator have anything to do with my kids? Like, this is something that I enjoy. This is something that I feel like I was meant to do since I was, like, way younger. Like, in a, like since I was actually a kid, really. Um, I, don't, I was just thinking because, like, I did, like, a video, like, for something. And I was, like, I don't know if I was in, like, middle school. I'm not sure. I probably was, like, in middle school. Middle school, I believe and that's how I, and just looking back at that just made me feel like this is actually something that's meant for, this is me like this is so me i love it um and obviously i have kids but what does that gotta do anything like that just gives me more content i could do it's content with my kids if i wanted to and i agree kids do need stability but at the same time like, I'm an adventurous person, so, like, I want to try and do the best for my kids and make them have a good time. Like, you can still be a parent and still have an interesting life. <laughs> okay. Uh, someone said, hi, quick question. Where is this, wait, where is home? All right, so home is, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, wait. I mean, I don't know if that's the answer to the question or if they talk about like where I'm home, like from, like where I moved from or, but right now I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Are the kids in school? Of course, my kids are in school. One is in school, one's in daycare. What led to you being homeless? Homelessness. 
And so basically I did have an apartment, but it went to a lease violation because the neighbor below us will complain, I guess about the noise, like my kids, cause you don't know, have kids. So, and she was like an older woman, you know, so she probably wasn't feeling it. She probably wasn't feeling it or whatever. And so she's always complaining to management, I guess. And we were just new there. We just got moved in. The first day we moved in, we got a complaint. It was nighttime. So just being a mother, like, people just try to make things so much harder for you and everything. So it went from that. Um, basically, like, they told us we had to move because of that. Or I could switch apartment. But the apartments I saw, obviously, wasn't interested in on that property and everything. And I'm the type of person, I'm like, I could be picky. Not... I can be, but like, well, yeah, I can be picky because I have to feel, have a, like, I have to have a feel for something. And if I know something's not right, I'm not just going to be forced or feel like it's forced. I want things to go natural. So that didn't work out. And, um, yeah, so that's the main reason I'll say of how it started of us becoming homeless. If you want more details, then you can ask for that. Um, and I'm also confused about the hating. So, when I say that, that's for all the new people that may come across one video so far on, hold on one second. So, yeah, so basically about that, it's like the new people that basically come to my page. And obviously, they don't know me right away. So, it's like when they see me probably like, you know, rambling, talking, saying what I got to say. And then they're like, is, they saying it as if like I'm coming for them, but they just came to my page. Obviously, I'm making this video Speaking on something that, you know, I see from what people have been saying to me and everything, like negative so far. Not to the new people. It's for people that already been commenting over and over negative stuff in my posts. Because my thing is, how are you so tuned and invested in me? Or, like, obviously you're watching me because you're commenting on more than one video just being negative. That's hating. If you don't have nothing nice to say, that's hating. Just because... I'm bold enough to tell my story about me being homeless and I'm being very genuine about it. And you don't like the fact that I'm on here basically asking for support and help because you don't care. That's hating because why won't you let someone be? Why would you got to like try to, you know, like try to like just um, throw like a parade or what is the saying? Like just try to make someone feel bad or whatever. Like. I, I just don't understand. So, but then again, it's like, you don't have nothing to do with me. It's about their own insecurities and that they're trying to protect on me because I'm just doing what I feel is best for me and my family. And it's just the ones that are basically already saying the mean things, not new people or not. I'm not saying people in general because they're like, oh, she has an attitude. I said that I have an attitude. I'm just being blunt and I'm just telling it like it is like, I'm just telling it like it is. So it's not like, you know. But yeah, I feel like if you do have something negative to say about me, like, why are you saying it? Because, like, why? So yeah, I look at that as definitely hating. Like, what about me is bothering you so much? So much. Like, what is it? For that, for me to be able to at least have, like, maybe, for example, a good three months of rent saved up for me and my kids. Until at least if I get, like, maybe a second job or at least, like, you know, um, you know, as far as investing and things that I really want to do, you know, like, financially to help me and my kids. So, all those things, I feel like, you know, that stuff kind of, like, adds up quick, you know, versus, like, say, for example, if I just made it the goal for me for, like, say, $2,000. But with 10,000, it kind of give me like a range that I can work with that can really help me. That could try to like use it right, you know, for each thing. Um, so it's just basically just to help me on that track, being that I came from a shelter, just to be on that road to financial stability. So I would definitely appreciate you guys if you guys to help me reach that goal because that's what I need help for, you know. How have you been in the shelter and job but no funds? So. In the beginning, um, I did try to save. They did say you could use, like, obviously your first paycheck. Imagine, like, being in a shelter for months, not able to work. So, when you finally work, of course, you're probably going to want to treat yourself a little something at your first paycheck. And they said, obviously, like, they said that was okay. But they did want you to have, like, a certain amount you could save up. So, 
I'm not gonna lie, like I did end up getting a car while I was in the shelter. Um, and I felt like it was a good deal for me and my kids. So I took it, you know, because really who wants to be catching the bus, you know? So I took the vehicle. And the reason why, because it may, it may be like, why would she just get a, a car in the shelter? It wasn't like that. The reason why is because I have a car that I owned. It's an older car, it's a 2004 Infiniti. And I've been having it on someone's property um, to be, you know, just so that way I could avoid getting it towed and things like that. But it needs work done. Like I need both catalytic converters and everything replaced. Oh, and that's another reason why a part of the goal for me to help me, you know, probably get my car fixed. I need like my catalytic converters replaced, different things like that of the car because it's been sitting in for like months. Like it's not drivable right now at all unless I was to get it fixed. So at the time, man or whatever, you know, when he told me about it at the time, I looked into it and when I knew how easy it was to get it, I'm like, wow. And then it was available that day. So all I needed was a down payment. That was the day I got paid and everything. Like I felt like I was really getting blessed because I had a car that needed fixed and it was an older car. So it's like, just get this nice newer car. It's used, but it's in great condition compared to that car. So that's the real reason why I got a vehicle at that point. At this point in time, it'll be me being in the shelter. But now it's like I don't have it because I was in a car accident. And that's why I, it's like I've been grieving it. And I've been trying not to think about it to like really get down sad. Because I'm just hoping me and my kids get something great, greater in due time. So that's the real reason why I did like got a car at the point in time of me being in a homeless shelter. And then obviously the financial responsibility started coming in when me having to pay like the car note and then i had to get car insurance my car insurance right now is not cheap so and then on top of me having to pay like child care and stuff so like all those financial responsibilities and like trying to get around and everything like that adds up and i'm just a housekeeper i get paid by weekly and right now you know obviously i have other things i want to do um to have like financial income you guys know me right now being like a housekeeper and you guys can do the math. Someone, and then the person said, uh, did you file your taxes yet? Yes, I have. And all my tax money is gone. And most of it has been gone because I had to cover my Georgia power debt. So I could try to get an apartment, a hotel stays. So I used on the car rental, food I probably used it for, like little things like that. I know I bought some things for the camping trip um just like little stuff like that really and it's all just adds up someone said how you hate on a homeless person you you're hating well to the negative people who keeps constantly saying stuff you're hating because you're basically putting your own insecurities on me because i'm basically trying to get help for like my gofundme so it's like you're like putting your stuff on me like that's a problem like you're hating on me like how are you gonna get mad at me for like asking for help like when you think about it, how are you gonna get mad for asking me for help like i just don't i just don't get it so someone said georgia will put the baby daddies on child support where they daddies grandparents aunties go home so i did put my youngest youngest son i started child support and it's been a year now and from the last time i spoke to them they made it seem like they still can't locate him but they had me thinking like they did locate him and kept trying to like serve him but they never did and then to one day they told me that they cannot serve like they couldn't find his address and then i'm like well i've been telling you guys his job why can't you guys like contact the job and then the one lady made it seem like they couldn't like verify or like know that that was his job and i'm like that's his job like or so basically like i guess it's still going so they're able to find him and i'm like i never thought child support takes so long to do it like i never knew it was a whole process to do like that is crazy i thought people would be getting it right away and we haven't even had a dna test even though i know he's a father we haven't he hasn't been present this whole time during my pregnancy is nothing he hasn't been supportive i haven't got my son nothing for his first birthday he don't even talk to me nothing nothing so yeah i have not been able to get money from his father 
do child support either because they act like they can't find him, which is stupid. Because I told him his job and everything. Like, he's a store manager. I gave them the exact address. So, something's not right. And then the other one, I tried this road a long time ago. And it just didn't work. Like, he's a type to, like, not want to work. Like, he's, like, one of them types. In and out of jail. If you know, you know. But now, I don't know if times have obviously changed. But I know he, he has got out of jail too recently. But he's been out for some time now. But I don't talk to his dad like that. Like, I'm not, I don't want to talk to him like that. And so, I don't know if he's working, not working. But he is in PA. And he'll probably try to make it hard for me too. And this, being that he's out of state, this will probably be even more of a hard thing to do. Because I can't even get child support for the first one. So, we'll make sure I'm going to get child support for the second one. He's out of, out of state. So, but I kid you not, I swear, like, if I was getting child support, I feel like it would help me, you know, definitely raising the kids. Like, you know, I feel like they need to do their part and help support me, brother. I'm rich, not rich. Like, they should be doing their part, helping me take care of their kids because I could be using that towards paying off child care, getting them their things they need, things of that nature. Investing in my, like, investing in their future. Like, I could be doing all that. The grandparents, like I said, the youngest dad um i don't know nothing about his parents or whatever um my oldest uh i'm no longer cool with his mother his dad's mother so we don't communicate his dad i was cool with them and his wife she be commenting i guess to speak to me speak to him um but they they don't help they never helped or anything but my son has you know, I don't I don't talk to nobody right now, but they don't help me anyway. Like, the grandparents ain't helping. And then, of course, my mom, she obviously has been the only one out of all of them who has helped. And then my dad, he don't really do much. Like, he don't really help. Like I said, I don't got no family here anyways. But still, my dad, he doesn't, I don't really have a close relationship with him. Whether he wants to talk to me or not. I've just, I've never been close with my dad. And their aunties. Yeah, my one older sister, she has helped as well. And no, I don't want to go home. Because I feel like I would be depressed. Like, I'll probably go crazy. <laughs> Said, I just saw interviews on the streets of ATL, Georgia. The guy asking her how much she used to make six figures money. She used to be a model dancer. Girl, we're all that money. As black people, we must save money. <sighs> Okay, so, um, obviously, when you make fast money, ugh, that's the answer. Fast, it's fast money. So, if I wanted to do something, you know, obviously, I will save it to do what I really want to do. But, as far as just saving it, just to just save, obviously, I haven't done that. Um, I'm sure we all can work on saving, um... But obviously, I used it to, you know, pay my bills. Like, when I was doing what I did, I, I used it to pay bills. You know, um, I used it to survive. I used it to do things I want to do. That's basically what the money went on. Like, just on some hustling stuff. Like, it comes, it goes. <laughs> and I did, obviously, doing that. I have obviously started a business and invested in that and everything. So, it's not like I'm just, was a splurge or anything like that. I've definitely used my money to, like, help me invest in things, too. I was later. Okay, and now we're almost done. Okay, someone said, why'd you get put out of shelter? I don't believe you because I know women have been through that shelter. They help with them um, with apartment and furniture. So that may be true, but that don't happen to everybody. You know, everybody is different. Everybody's there, you know, from all walks of life, you know. So it just really depends. You know, you can't compare yourself to others. You know, like some people, you know, everybody's situation is different. Everybody's kids are different. You just never know. But, you know, it's definitely something that can happen and that it has happened. You know, and it's just crazy because I'm thinking, oh, let's please don't let us get kicked out. Like, you know, thinking we're going to make it to the end. And then sure enough, boom, 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 boom. We end up getting kicked out again. Like, 
But everybody, you know, situation is different, you know. Unfortunately, I didn't make it to the end, so. But I didn't get the help that I needed from them. Like they, to me, they, I didn't have a good experience at all. So someone said, please be brutally honest about the sex industry, abuse, our work, physical and mental abuse, financial abuse, STDs, and HIV rates, etc. Young women see the money and enter into the industry without all of the facts. Okay, so of course, you know, I definitely feel like you should be careful. This life, the lifestyle of doing, you know, sex work is definitely not for everybody. You have to really be, you know, a hustler. You have to be, you have tough skin, you know, like that way you don't get all worked over, walked over. But it really depends on what you want and what you're trying to do. And if you're into, like, you actually are into what you're trying to do, like, for the money. Um, I won't say do it if you're not into it. Like, I really feel like you have to have some type of connection to, like, want to do it, obviously. Um... Because some people, they don't have no attachments when it comes to a dude or anything. Some females can get, like, easy affluence. Like, I was with, you know, a pimp or whatever. So, I know that pretty well. Um, and then most of all, I will say be careful. Like, obviously use protection. I'm not going to lie. But, like, when I was with them, like, wannabe pimps, like, they knew to use, like, protection. Um, I would definitely say if you're a female, take good care of yourself. You know, get tested every time you have a new partner sorry you guys my thing up. every time you have a new partner um, every time you have a new partner and i would just say don't be so trusting like just be with any old body like definitely you got to know your stuff you got to know how to move you got to know your stuff um mental abuse could be a thing but i feel like this comes with like people mainly that are already dealing with someone or feel like they're being controlled by someone but some people actually like being in that type of lifestyle like believe it or not you know but i would definitely say definitely doing that line of work be protected um i don't know if this is mainly like a sex question or something that have to do with like the adult entertainment and in like industry um because that would be like a little different but you still gonna make sure you get tested Period, point blank and make sure the other person is tested as well if you're doing like content make sure y'all both tested and everything oh so, that's all did you did you and uh, did you and marcus the interviewee or interviewer have relations the answer is no i have not slept with marcus i have not like a lot of people have been assuming that or thinking that he sees what the people he interviewed like First of all, that's not my business. Second of all, I didn't know Marcus prior to him coming up to me. Like, I, the reason why I recognized, like, I didn't recognize him, like, who, like, what he looked like, because I didn't see his face. But I saw one of his videos in the past, him downtown interviewing a female, and her dude kept getting, like, coming by her, trying to interrupt the video. But I never saw what Marcus actually looked like, you know what I mean? Or I never knew about that. And then one day I was taking care of something and I did see him it's like recording someone, but I didn't, like I said, I was minding my business. I didn't think much of it. And then eventually he soon came up to me and I was standing with some people. And that's when I eventually like went in for it and allowed him to interview me. So, but nothing was, you know, forced or anything. I mean, I'm not gonna say too much, but just answer that question simply short the answer is no no relations no sexual relations nothing like that whatsoever and even like people are making like videos of me like i've seen on like youtube people have been using my pictures for their thumbnails try to like make up stories just to try to get like a storyline or clout whatever you want to call it but um what do you say that's social media for you guys but yeah to clear the air no someone said how did you get into the industry did you dance in pittsburgh uh so 
I don't want to go into too much detail because I know this video is already super long. If you guys want a, another video, let me know. Make sure you guys are liking this video right now. Make sure you guys, you know, commenting what you guys like so far about the video. Um, hit the push notifications. And make sure you guys, of course, subscribe. But, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to answer the first thing right off the bat without even got into the whole the sexual, like, thing. Was I started off doing premium Snapchats. That's how I got started. Someone who I knew had put me on to it. That's the very first thing. Wait. Oh, I think. Wait, no, that's the second thing. I first started off, uh, I went to this strip club with this chick. And I danced, you know, for the first time when I was with her. That was my first time being, like, a dancer. Like, you're doing some sort. Um, so, yeah, started off me being a dancer. Not, uh, not, like, you know, everything else. But it's all in the same family. and did you dance in pittsburgh uh no i have not and i'm not gonna lie i have auditioned at um i think i acquired oh yeah i went to like three dance clubs i want to say in pittsburgh um one didn't hire me um Another one, I think, I don't know if I had to show them a picture in order to get an audition. I'm not sure, but they, I guess, declined me. I guess to keep the answer short. But I was told, like, they'd be hiring, like, coke heads and stuff anyway up in there. And all the girls be looking super bony and all that. So, I guess it depends on people's style. Y'all know, Pittsburgh is like a black and white city. So, you know, I may not have been their type for that Pacific club. Who knows? But I did, you know, try and then another club that I went to, um, I did, I didn't dance on stage for them. They didn't have me dance. They had me just change into like something. Y'all, mind you, this was when, before I got body done. Not saying I got my body done because we had dance hurt. No. But this was before I had surgeries. And this is, um, when I probably didn't really know too much. Because I was doing everything on my own. I didn't really like, you know. I didn't really like hang out with girls, show up with girls at these things. Like I just, it was all me. So yeah, but I didn't get that either, I believe. And I didn't even dance. So, oh, and I went to another club there too. And they didn't have me dance either. They just had me change and that was it. So I guess that was another cup of tea, but this is what it is. Would you be willing to move to a different state for housing? If so, I have information for immediate newly instruction in Texas. They are tax credit and cheaper than the ones you looked at in Georgia. And thank you, but no. Um, I don't plan on relocating anywhere. Like I said, I didn't move to Georgia like because of like the apartment thing, like or like that wasn't a factor that I focused on when prior like trying to move somewhere. This was just something that I just I wanted to move here. Like, you know, I didn't really I guess that could be something you could think about when you like want to move somewhere, but I honestly that wasn't even a thought. Like, and that's just me keeping it real. All right, this will be the last two. Why won't you use your brain and apply yourself instead of begging and crying? So basically you're trying to call me dumb. Because I am I'm not dumb and I have done my research. I've done my research and everything. Trust and believe that. Like I am a go-getter. I'm very persistent when it comes to, you know, making sure I get things done and taken care of. But, you know, everybody is different and I feel like for me this is my way of getting help. That's just me personally. It may not be for everybody. That's just me personally. And that's just my honest answer. But it's this is not something I just do but obviously right now i'm struggling and i need help so you know i created a gofundme like i don't see nothing wrong with that and i'm crying because i'm hurt i'm going through emotions i've been through this journey long enough i don't want to be in a situation i want better for my kids like i want better i want better so yeah i'm feeling all of this emotion i'm going through a lot because i am a person who is truly trying you know, and it's like, boom, you get kicked out of a shelter. Boom, you get in a car accident. Boom, like, 
no one's here it's like you know here for me like you know so it's like i'm going through all of this on top of trying to stay strong and still do what i have to do okay and last video why let's see why don't you get into a sugar daddy slash sugar baby arrangement that can help you get into a stable situation so i've tried like i feel like for that i have to be outside <laughs> like at, at the right places i feel like i'm more like a in-person type of chick than versus an online i've tried to do like sign up for different stuff but i don't know i don't know how some people be getting stuff so quick on those sites because I don't know if you have to pay a subscription every month to do that. I'm not sure. But I never had much luck, I guess. Um, but I feel like I wouldn't have mind that at all. I just don't really know, like, how to go about it, I guess, the right way. Or, you know, I just haven't really got too invested into it. It's always been, like, a thought in my head type of situation. Or, like, I tried it, but i never been consistent with it. Of trying to find one on the type of site. Things like that. But I truly feel like if I was to find someone like that... I want to meet a sugar daddy like actually like in person yeah and it was like when i was like years ago when i came across like this italian guy he wasn't like a real sugar daddy or nothing but he obviously have like you know gave me money stuff like that but i never had like a real person who just like splurged on me so hopefully one day i could get you know some special treatment from a man that cares about me or just want to have fun with me and just do everything for me but that has not happened unfortunately <laughs> at least not yet so but yeah so definitely need to you know stick to just love one up and let's see what presents itself but um i oh, really really hope you guys enjoyed this video i try to be as honest and upfront um like i said i try to answer like different questions not ones that sound seem like repetitive or just haters just hating you know so yeah um hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys next time comment below what you guys think and again welcome to my channel with the new collection bye guys